Hey everyone, thank you for joining me here in the truck this morning for a little truck talk. Hope everybody is well. Um, just want to come to you this morning. I was thinking about uh, the sin debt that we all hear about when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, when I preach it, I mention the sin debt. And when looking in the Bible this morning, um, if you look in the Bible, you will not see those two words together sin and debt but you'll see sin throughout the bible you will see debt uh in a few places the word debt basically it's a true metaphor of our condition in this world we have our sin nature okay that's where the sin debt came from is because we have a sin nature all right that's why we are indebted to god so, this brought me to some, some passages, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, a paraphrase, says, and 13 says, And you that were dead in sins, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him. I mean, Jesus. Okay. We were quickened together with Jesus. That's such good news. In 14, in paraphrase, I probably missed a few words there off that verse. But in 14, it says, um, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and was contrary to us. All right. Nailing it to the cross. So he took care of that debt for us but we must believe that he did it for us we must believe that he did it for us but we must believe that he did that or you must believe that you did that for he did that for you and for me and the entire world that's the difference right there when you come into agreement with god about your sin debt you have basically humbled yourself in a way that you are saying I'm not perfect. I know I need a savior. I am a sinner. I need help. I need help to pay this debt. You can't pay this debt. You have to understand that, beloved, and believer or unbeliever or a so-called believer. You may be a false convert because you can believe in vain. As 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4 points out in there. You can believe in vain. All right? You could breathe, you could believe wrongly and miss heaven. That's what you see in a lot of uh, institutions today, uh, churches and, and, and outside of churches, everybody. Even the lost person has a wrong idea of heaven. I watched a video of President Trump with a uh, brother on here on YouTube, Ono. Um, he basically, Trump, at that point in time, I don't know what he believes now or how old that video was, President Trump said, if I'm good, I get to go to heaven. And if I'm bad, well, you know, I go there, that other place, meaning hell. It sounds simple, and it sounds good to the lost person. I'm here to tell you, that is not the gospel. President Trump, If you, I doubt you will ever come across this video of my little small YouTube chan channel. Know that we love you. I love you, and we don't want to see you go to that place that you just described in that video. You must believe that you are indeed a sinner. Your goodness cannot merit you salvation. Your money cannot, and, and all the people, that rich people that help, will not merit salvation. Okay? So, President Trump, I pray that you will trust Christ as your Savior. You come at the end of yourself and realize you, you are a sinner. All have fallen short, the Bible says. All have sinned. Go to Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have a sin debt. In order to get that debt paid, I know uh, a lot of rich people don't like debt. Well, they have a sin debt, but you can't pay that. Your money can't pay this sin debt won't even come close 
to paying this sin debt. Okay, that's what that's what they're saying when when you say, well, if I'm good, I get to go to heaven. What well, define good? What are you doing? You know, you're helping a lot of orphanages out. You're helping a lot of people out. You have to help a lot of our veterans out. No, it is you come at the end of yourself and realize you need a sinner and you need a savior and you place your trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. His shed blood wiped away sin. Your slate is clean. You are debt free now. See, I can't go to hell tomorrow if I wanted to. I can't go to hell next year if I wanted to because why? My debt has been paid in full, nailing it to the cross. As the scripture says in, in, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. Go read that. All right. The. The ordinances that was against us, all right, they are against us because the ordinances were are perfect. All right, those ordinances, the Ten Commandments, are perfect. It shows the perfect character of God. They're against us because we are human flesh and we have that sin nature. And they are contrary to us because we cannot identify with those Ten Commandments. We cannot identify with perfection. That's why they're contrary to us. Because we are imperfect. We have missed the mark. That's what sin is. Missing the bullseye. Missing the mark. We miss the mark daily. In word, thought, or deed. That's why we need a Savior. And once you're saved. The moment you place your trust in the Messiah. Alone for your salvation. Your debt has been paid in full. Okay? And you now get to go to heaven on what Jesus has done. Because heaven requires perfection. And when your debt is paid, God now sees Jesus in you. He made you perfect by the Holy Spirit that resides on the inside, spinning up, so to speak, a new nature, a new divine nature. That's how he sees you perfect. But we still have a sin nature from Adam that we are holding on to because... We are still in these bodies of flesh. We are, we are still in these bodies of flesh. And we are going to mess up, fall up, make mistakes. Say things that we shouldn't. Right? So, my prayer is that those out there that think and heard that video of President Trump saying, If I'm good, I get to go to heaven. If I'm bad, I don't. He is sharing a false gospel there. No, it is Jesus Christ himself that saves. None of your good works will save you. No matter how much money you give, I don't care if you developed whole orphanages. Orphanages. Tongue twister. Waiting for my coffee, by the way. Um, I like coffee. So, Trust him as your savior and him alone. And when you do, you have the assurance that you are going to heaven. Because the Bible, what? The Bible assures you. The Bible makes you stable. The Bible says when you trust Christ as savior, after you heard, after you heard the gospel, after you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? That's Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Anyway, that's just a little tidbit on the sin debt today. I pray that you will trust Christ as your Savior. I love you, and have a great day. Bye for now.